Hello, everybody, and good morning. It's another day here at Airgun Expo, and we have Airguns of Arizona here in the studio, and we're looking at some amazing air guns today. Larry, how are you doing? I'm doing great. You're adjusting to our wonderful West Texas uh, weather conditions. That I feel uh, like I need windshield wipers on my eyes with all the dust. Yeah, just they're not to <laughs> wash away the eyes, rain. It's fine. Yeah, it's, it has nothing to do with water. It's just the dust removal. It's, yes, yes, dust. Removal. It is brutal. It is brutal. So before we get started, I want to say thank you to Gateways of, Gateway to Air Guns for sponsoring and getting this whole Air Gun Expo off the ground, and of course also. Air Guns of Arizona for all that they've done to make this happen. If it wasn't for these guys, we wouldn't be here. We keep telling you guys that because it's that important. If you guys enjoy the content that we're putting out and you find it useful, then thank these guys, and Travis is over there, and Larry's right here. Thank these guys because without them, we wouldn't be doing it. So we are here to talk about the Red Wolf, and I have actually shot one of these like once at their house, uh, and it was... It's an experience that I I never I don't even know how to put into words because it's just I, I don't know it just is such an advanced advanced gun and I'm here because I, I I personally kicked Travis out of this particular slot because I want to know <laughs> about these guns because I'm itching to actually spend some bench time with one of these which we have that coming up later in the week we're gonna be shooting these bad boys so and what do we got you, here if you only shot that in our range. The problem with these guns is they only make one hole. <laughs> yeah. We need to get out on your range and shoot 50 to 100 yards where these things really shine. Yeah, I, that's exactly what I want to do. In fact, I was talking to Robert back in the day, and I really wanted a 177. Now, you guys do that in 177, I believe? Yes. See, I wanted the 177 because I wanted to just see how precise we could get that 177 slinging. Uh, that's what I wanted to do. Now they got the new JSB knockout slugs. It, I may have to call, talk to Robert again on that because that seems to me like it would be just a ton of fun to just like a laser beam shoot with these rifles. But tell me, if you're looking at these guns, if you guys out there see them, they say, oh, it's just an air gun. Boy, you couldn't be more wrong. <laughs> it's not just an air gun. What's right. going on here? So these guns come in several configurations. As you said, 177, 22, 25, and 30. Okay. Uh, they come in a standard power version, which this particular model is a standard power. And they also come in a high power version, which this 30 is a high power version. What's the difference between the two? Uh, I know one's more power, but what technically or mechanically is different between the two? So mechanically, the barrel is longer, so you optimize the Got use it. of the air. Okay. The other part of that, these are electronic guns, so the programming is different in order to optimize that. Okay, so uh, technically, as far as physical difference, the high power is going to have a longer barrel, but is right. the, are the guts the same, essentially? You just tweak, you set the guts up differently? Guts are the okay. same. Got it. Uh, yep. Now, here's a just a, a, a question. Um, if I buy the standard one, can I get the longer barrel at some time down the road? Yeah. Okay. You could, you could get the additional barrel. Uh, just curious. Come just... with the shroud. They are all uh, threaded yep. so that you can add a moderator. You notice this one doesn't have one, yep. although it does have a barrel shroud, and it's just slightly louder in 30 caliber than this uh, 22 is. With the moderator, and if I was, if I'm right, because I heard the tech guys talking, and I heard that Travis got a, you got a question. I've there? got a question, Larry. Right. <clears throat> yeah, so you said the guts are all the same, um, and what we mean by the guts is uh, the valving and the electronics are all identical. Just the barrels longer, and the programming is different. So if you have the low power model and um, you want to upgrade it and buy the longer barrel. Do they offer the programming to the individual? Can he reprogram it himself, or does he have to send the gun in to have it reprogrammed for the high power version? You can do either one. Um, and the way you would do that if you do it yourself is we sell this programming unit. This works with all electronic day state guns. It's not just the Red Wolf. Uh, the preceding models, this will work on it. The new model, the Delta Wolf, it will work on. And in this, you get the little programmer, 
and you get all the cables that you need, which I'm not going to pull them out of there because they never go back in. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, and the key to this is if you're going to do it yourself, before you do anything, write down the parameters. Go to our website. Don Golombieski is an expert at programming these things, and he has a video, and the first thing he says is, write down your original ver or your original numbers. That way, if you get it all screwed up, you can always go back and bring it back to the original. Yeah, and, and that's great advice. Um, so, so, do you send the data to the customer who wants to uh, change his programming um, via, uh, via a program, or is it just uh, digits that need to be placed inside of the um, programmer that he can do himself um, to make it a high power model from a low power model. We can give them guidelines, but typically if you're going to change the barrel and you're confident enough to program it yourself, you're also going to want to tune it to your specific pellet. Correct. And so you get it close and there's plenty of videos out there on people that have reprogrammed their guns and program them to specific pellets. And so you can view those videos on YouTube or Gateways to Air Guns sure. and get an idea of where to start. Okay. And so and then you, you start working with the dwell time and all those sure. things yeah. to optimize your accuracy. And and back to my original question, do you supply that information to to the person with the programmer? So if he calls up and says no. I Okay. Because so, it varies so vastly. Okay. There's not one boilerplate that says this is going to work. If you eat it, shoot a, you know, you've got a standard power barrel, let's mm -hmm. say, and it's in 22, and you're shooting 18 grain pellets, and now you've purchased another barrel for it, and now it's the high power. Sure. And you want to shoot the 25s. Why? You know, there's just so many different parameters. Yeah, I mean, you can set it up a million different ways. That's right. And, and some people are going to want the power. Right. And a little less accuracy. And other people are going to shoot bench rest. Sure. And this gun will accommodate both. Right. You can get the power out of it with a little less accuracy. And it'll still be really accurate. But they can call your tech and, and get maybe some kind of a baseline they could work with. Yeah, you can go to the Daystate site, okay. I believe, and there's some guidelines on there. Fantastic. Thank you, Larry. So, and email is the best way uh, to get that information because then, if you're like me, you don't remember all the numbers. <laughs> and if they send me an email, now I know, you know, I can't forget it unless I delete it. So, and I have a trash folder and I don't empty that very often because <laughs> of that. <laughs> So, but yeah, these are very, very versatile rifles. When you purchase either one of these guns, they will come with three pre-programmed uh, power levels, mm -hmm. high, mid, and low. You can change that in the field by simply holding the trigger, opening the bolt, taking the safety off. That puts it in program mode. You can reset the you can set the number of shots on the count on your magazine. You can set it so that when you get to the end of the magazine, it won't shoot. You can reset the shot counter. You can change the, <laughs> the power. And you can do this all in the field. That's pretty cool. And it, it, I'm going to just, just guess on a few things because uh, I'm – have zero, I, as I said, I, I threw Travis off this uh, table because I wanted to ask questions. Travis, shush. Um, or get the shusher <laughs> out and shush Travis. Uh, I wanted to ask questions about the mechanics because I am like old school. I'm sort of like Joe's over there. He's like, uh, I mean, he's like, take the Marauder and the Discovery apart. It's got a valve. you, know, you got a spring. You're hitting it with a hammer. You have all these things that are just, all right, mechanically all this stuff has happened and I get it. This is not like that at all. You have literally a, a mechanical electronic system that's measuring air, measuring pressure. Uh, it's set. a combination 
I see. Okay. Um, it just seems like the very old technical. technology because you okay. still have to have a pin that mm -hmm. hits the valve in the tank. Okay, all right. But instead of having a spring driving that, you have an electronic solenoid all right. that hits that valve. Okay. And you can change that to where it hits it harder or easier. You can change it so that it hits it longer. Yeah, like or a shorter. Like so, well. so essentially, you're, you're like if I'm tuning a Marauder, I have a hammer spring and I have a striker. Right. So instead of manually flipping a, an Allen key, you're actually just putting in a, a, a number that would equate to those changes, but it's all electronic. And because it's electronic, it's the exact same way every time. Correct. It's okay. very, very precise. Right. And just to veer off a little bit here, a lot of people worry about getting these out in the rain. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that these have been... Well, just recently, uh, this same platform is used in the LPR, which is a field target version of the Red Bull. Mm -hmm. And it was pouring rain. Our competitor shot it through the entire match. Didn't have a single problem. Oh, that's cool. So they have learned to seal up everything that needs to be sealed kind of up. Like harden it up so, so it can't be affected. Yeah, and the cool. laminate stock, is that stock's pretty well sealed. You notice this one's in walnut. Uh, it has I don't issues know. of any walnut stock in the ring. I got to tell you, I like the flash, man. I like the blue. Yeah. I like the red stock. The walnut's beautiful, but I would probably take the red laminate. That just looks too awesome. Can that we get also this comes in, in a dark blue. I was thinking maybe well. yellow and black for Ergon Webb. I'm just saying it would look pretty slick. <laughs> uh, we'll get right on that. Um, we don't uh, make bumblebees. Oh, that's not nice. <laughs> that is rude. You're out. Uh, <laughs> Nothing against. I, I, that's fine. Ergon Pro. It's fine. This, I, this is fine. I, I'm very upset now, and I'm going to go whine and cry. Um, no, I. The other thing that you've got going on here, and I remember in the shop when I cocked it, so normally when you cock a gun like this, you're pulling a hammer back. Right. With no hammer. <laughs> so the force to cock the gun is click, click. I mean, it's so easy. In fact, our competitive shooters that shoot speed silhouette, yeah. they put a little adapter right here on this lever, yeah. and they just operate it with their thumb. <laughs> because all you're doing is bringing it back, making a micro switch, putting in your next pellet, yeah. and flipping it forward. Yeah, You're not setting any springs. You're just telling the electronics that, yeah, ready hey, to go. I loaded another round. We're ready to go. And the same is the, it's the same with the trigger. The trigger's electronic too, correct? Yes, it is. It's actually a micro switch, but it is adjustable. It's a two-stage trigger. So it's like any other trigger. You, know, you bring it up, and you can increase or decrease the wall of the second stage. Yeah. Before it breaks. And then when you put all that together, one of the things Travis and I have talked about many times, um, when you're dealing with a straight mechanical gun, you have a heavy hammer that's hitting a valve. And that hammer that's hitting the valve is reciprocal force in the gun. It does matter. It does move the gun. The more you can reduce that, the less movement you have with your muzzle, the more accuracy you have, specifically when you're dealing with long range. So when you take all of that out of the equation, now the gun right. just sits still. Yeah, if you have any muzzle rise, why, you know, it is all because of the air. It has nothing to do with a big heavy spring in there operating. And, and really, pin. and I'm if I'm right, and I'm understanding if I'm digesting this, um, let's say you do have a lot of extra air coming out, you can actually dial that back in the programming. You can. Uh, there are some other solutions. Like I said, these are all threaded. Yep. So we have a moderator that actually has a compensator on the end of it Okay. that will reduce the rise yeah. of the Just barrel. The more stable you can be, the better, again, you shoot competitively at 100 yards. So if it is not dead nut stable, you're going to be off. You can throw your shot way off just with a tiny little twitch. It's all about what they call lock time. Mm -hmm. Lock time is from the moment the micro switch is made or the trigger yeah. breaks until the pellet leaves the end of the barrel. I got you. And the rifle has to stay completely still on target during that period of time. Now it's a very, very short period of time, 
But still, you just move it a it, it is, millimeter it, and it's off. I remember, I'm going to get just divert just for a second to talk about how that brain works. Um, I remember I used to play tennis competitively back when I wasn't fat and I wasn't old, <laughs> um, back as a teenager. Uh, and we, I remember watching some videos with my coach at the time, and they were describing how the brain works and how it anticipates the next thing. It's always like preparing for the next thing. And they had this drill where they'd have lights go across and they'd tell the person to swing when they thought the ball was going to be there and they were always ahead. Okay, so when you pull the trigger, it's instinctive. It's like, who plays golf? Anybody play? I know Travis does. He's really good. I play golf. I'm horrible. Um, I, I go for my money's worth, triple digits are fine with me. Um, I drive him nuts on the course, I'm sure. But the big issue is you want th that people have a lot of times, they'll take their swing and they'll look up to see where they just hit the ball, but they haven't hit it yet. And so they're topping the ball and it dribbles 15 feet. I have that affliction. Um, and I this, got a pink ball for that once. Did you? Yeah. It was a tournament and driving off the tee, and I got the pink ball with the worst drive. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> the same thing happens with shooters with follow-through. They're anticipating what they just did before they've done it, and that little bit of a twitch throws their shot off. And it, the, way, the way I've noticed that I can see if I'm doing it is if I'm, like, we were shooting the TX200 the other day, and I was doing it bad, <laughs> really bad, and I would shoot... And I was like, where am I going to go? And then wherever my scope ended is exactly where the pellet went. So I could tell that I, I had very bad follow through because I, wherever my scope was when I was done, that is where the pellet was headed. So right. if you see that happening, it's not your gun. It's not your scope, dude. It's you. Or do that. It's you. Because um, <laughs> I've got to remember the ladies. Um, but all right. So when we're talking about stability, let's segue to the next thing. We were talking about these bipods that you guys carry. Yeah, this is the AccuTech. Uh, we've got three versions of this. This happens to be the F class, okay, uh, named after the NRA uh, shooting discipline. Uh, has the wider stance. Uh, these are easily adjustable. You need it to be a little taller. You simply pull. You decide it needs to be shorter. You just push the button and it retracts. It'll point out at 45 degrees forward or 45 degrees back. Uh, it fastens to a Picatinny rail, which most people don't like to drill their nice walnut stock, but it has a real short um, mm -hmm. Picatinny rail on there to hold this. Okay. Looks like we have a question. Can you move that red gun back a little so they can see that on the camera? Oh, okay. Uh, I said three versions. We've got a real narrow version. We've got this, uh, which you can loosen this, and now you can rotate it this way. The latest uh, and most up-to-date version, uh, actually, you're able to loosen it, and let's say you're on a slight slope and you're out hunting, you can camp the rifle as well. You notice on this one I have a level. Sorry mm -hmm. about... Uh, those of you in the audience, but this level becomes critical when you start shooting longer distances right. so that your gun is always level, your scope's lined up with your bore. If it's off a little bit, now your or your vertical is going you're, to be off. You're chasing two different directions. So That's right. And this actually is a great segue to our next part. It's okay. beautiful. I don't even think you did it on purpose, but let's say you did. I didn't. We're going to give you the benefit <laughs> of the doubt that you did it on purpose. Um, you do want, if you're, especially if you're shooting competitively long range, or heck, you're just hunting and you want to be accurate, this needs to be exactly parallel with the bore. If it's twisted in, in any way, what you have is a tube in here. You're trying to line that up to match this. So with you the want bore. With the bore. And you want this to be as accurate as possible. So we were talking before about these, match, these sports, sports match. match mounts, that these are fully adjustable. And then... I'm not quite sure how they work, but I'm looking at all the screws and, and thingies on it, and I'm betting that you can adjust them uh, to whatever you need so that you, you optically center your scope, and then you can move your mounts to get it centered to the bore, and then you're just making minor adjustments from there. So by optically centering, you run it all the way down, all the way up, and then you split the difference. Right. You do the same thing horizontally. Yep. And let's say you have some barrel droop. You're putting these 
mounts on a springer. You can compensate for that because there's little set screws in here. You loosen it up and you can cant this forward. You can can it back. On this particular model, you can actually move it left on the front and right on the back. Mm -hmm. So it's fully adjustable so that when your scope uh, settings are at zero, you're on your side end target or side end point of aim. So instead of and adjusting, then, yeah. Yeah, 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 you yeah, get yeah. maximum adjustment vertically and horizontally takes, out of your scope. Probably takes time to set that up, but the benefits long term are huge. The other thing is, and uh, Travis mentioned it just before we started, is if you're shooting 100 yards with a scope that doesn't have as many clicks, you can also get some additional MLA. elevation yeah. out of this. And so if you don't like to hold on the fourth mill down, you can adjust it so that you're actually holding dead center on the scope on the yeah. crosshairs. The other thing that's Which I never do that. <laughs> I want to be able to see exactly the center, so I bracket it. You bracket shoot yeah. now. Um, the other thing that I that I know is really important, and folks may not know it, but if if you have a scope, I'm going to grab this one back here. If you have a scope and you've got that tube sort of going at the extreme of the optics, you run into some potential clarity issues. So the more centered you can be straight down the sweet spot of the glass the better your sight picture is going to be, the clearer the optics. Now, if you buy a $3,000 scope, you may not have that issue. But, I mean, most scopes are going to have a sweet spot. And if you can leverage that with a good set of mounts, you get a lot more uh, mileage out of your optic. Yeah, the sweet spot is always the center of these adjustments. When you get to the end, they won't be repeatable. So if yeah. you run it down and then back up, it may or may not. Yeah, go back to the same point. So you want to stay as, as center as you can. And what All do right. these mounts cost? Uh, those are north of hundred dollars. Okay. I think they're around one hundred and sixty. They're so expensive. Don't quote me on that. Go to airgunsofarizona.com. <laughs> but look, and and one of the things that you guys out there say, oh, those look just like everything I could buy on Amazon. They're not. Where are these made? These are made in England. Right. All right. These yes. aren't Chinese made. These are made no. in England, and they are distinctly different. When you hold. The two, they may look the same. You buy them at Amazon for 20 bucks or whatever, and you buy the regular mounts for what, 40 or 50 bucks, maybe 60 bucks for the regular mounts? Yeah, 40 to 60, okay. depending on which mount. So you're looking at a two to three times premium. You'll hold them, when you hold them in your hand, they are distinctly different, okay? Yeah, if you they, really look at them. It, they are different. They may look alike. The grade of the metal is different. Their uh, manufacturing is different. And really, Airguns of Arizona is really designed for that. Look, if you've got the cash and you want this to be your first gun, absolutely go for it. Buy a Daystate compressor, get a tank, get an Omega tank, and just be done and have a ball. If you're starting out, this may not be the best gun for you to start out with. You guys have things they can start out with. Yes. But when you've developed in the sport, when you've got some traction and you're wanting to take things to that next level, that's where you guys really come into your own with shooters that are transitioning to that place. Because if I'm buying a $100 brake barrel, I'm probably not buying $160 mounts. Probably. Right. Okay. But if I've got a $3,000 rifle and I've got a $1,000 scope, what's $200 in a set of decent mounts? Okay. Right. That's really where you guys really shine is in this stuff that really is for that ultra precision shooting. And you have a lot of things. I mean, you have, you guys still carry the Diana Outlaw? We do. I mean, that's a great entry level gun that's really good. So it's not like this is all you guys have. But this is really where you guys really shine and really knowing this side of the industry. And if you're a shooter that wants to have, wants to have the gun when you drop it on the bench at the range and you're shooting one MOA at 100 yards, well, that's what you guys do. You make that happen for people. And that is a tough, a tough challenge to shoot one MOA, like you said, in your dreams <laughs> or occasionally on paper. Um, but that is where, I mean, that's where I see Air Guns of Arizona really having its strength. Is it, am I yep. missing that? Nope. And speaking of that, I think we're getting to the end of the segment. Yeah, we are. So we're not going to talk about this in detail, oh. but this is the next generation. This is the Delta Wolf. Uh, 
it takes all of the features of all of these calibers and combines it into a simple uh, electronic package that you can program on the small screen. Comes in 177, 22, 25, and 30. Um, with each of those, and you can switch the barrels out, you just buy one platform. In each of those calibers, you can put in the, it's already pre-programmed. It has three preset programs, just like this one. High, medium, low. Uh, you can also program it custom to your, your uh, particular pellet. But this, although in short supply right now, they're <laughs> making them as fast as they can. They just launched it. Uh, this is the next generation combining all the technology they gained here into this gun. And then, as a bonus, they threw in a chronograph. Wow. So you know in the field, if you miss a shot, you can look at the chronograph, and if it's way off, you know there's an issue with the gun, which normally it isn't. It's me jerking the shot. <laughs> Something happened. But you will know immediately, plus you can tune your gun using that chronograph. You don't have to buy something separate. That's awesome. Also, it has this nice little throw bolt. It's much shorter stroke than this. Yeah, it's a lot different. So if you're doing speed silhouette, this might be the next up and coming thing to shoot speed silhouette with. But just a fantastic rifle. And like I say, they're making them as fast as they can. They come in, we test them like we do all the guns, and then they go out. So if you want one of these, get your name on the list and We'll ship it to you as soon as we get it. Those are orders coming in right now, Larry. Those are orders hitting the printer right now. Everybody are going in and putting in their deposits. There you go. Getting your guns. Well, man, thank you so much for everything. Not only showing us these great guns today, but just coming out here and being part of this event. Again, sure. guys, if it wasn't for Air Guns of Arizona, we would not be doing it. So this whole week, um, you know, it really was... Uh, they really stepped up to help us out. And I, I do want to thank all of our sponsors because it wasn't just Air Guns of Arizona. We have a whole just group of great sponsors that came out and really, well, helped us get this done. So thank you to everybody. If you want to learn more about these guys, go to the website, www.airgunsofarizona.com. If you want to learn more about all of our sponsors, go to www.theairgunexpo.com. Check them out. Because everybody's got cool stuff too. And don't forget, you can have a great gun, yeah, but you need great ammo. You do great. Yeah, that's um, right. One of the other sponsors is Predator. Yeah, who's that guy so. again? Is that Joe over there? Yeah, I've been watching him <laughs> so he didn't sneak out to my van. I didn't put the cable on the gun. Oh so like boy, you gotta lock that <laughs> stuff up. We've got Joe on a short leash. Uh, he's going to do a segment with me a little bit later. Uh, we do have. We do have him on a pretty short leash here. Uh, I'm going to give me a gun. I'll be right back. Yeah, see you, man. <laughs> so, guys, thank you for watching. We're going to reset and get ready for our next segment. What's coming up next? K9 Outdoors with some awesome arrogant targets. <laughs> Joe. Bye, Joe. You guys, thank you for joining us. Um, for the next probably 15 or 20 minutes, we'll have another segment coming your way. See ya. All right. So long. <laughs>